Des Moines and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515 244 0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. All right, six minutes after 4 o'clock, 11th day of January, Lord's Year 2016. This is the truth. If you just found this radio station, thank you. It's probably a God thing. Coincidence. It's no coincidence. I mean, you realize that, don't you? There is no coincidence in this life. Coincidence is God's way of revealing himself. It's a party. It's a big Jesus party. And God stands up and says, look, look what I do for you. Look at the level of love and grace and mercy I offer you. I have decided to reveal myself in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of a horrible world. So you know that you are mine and I am. So it's no coincidence that you came across this radio station today. We're not new, but we're new to you. We've been strong, full signal across central Iowa since last July. Five years prior to that, we were in Boone. And the Federal Communications Commission allowed us to move down here. And now Des Moines has its own Christian talk station. The only one. The only one. From 11 in the morning till 11 at night, it's social commentary with local preachers. Really good talk. You'd call it talk radio. From 11 at night till 11 in the morning, it's some of the best pastors, preachers, and teachers in this world. All Christian, biblically based, a biblical view through the word of God. My name is J. Michael McCoy. I do the show every afternoon from 3 to 5 here. You're welcome. Your comments are always welcome. Your voice is always welcome. In fact, today is a neat day for you to begin listening to us because today we have launched the Service Legends Truth Text Line at 809-0993. Put it in your phone. Put it in your contacts. 809-0993. And we have text coming in at this moment. What's on the text line now from Service Legends? Oh, I haven't had additional ones, just the carryovers from last For the ones time. from, all right, well, let's yeah. keep that line open. Mm-hmm. You can always get us there. You can also call into the radio show at 244-0077. It's your voice we want to hear. Ryan will answer the phone as he's our producer, and then we'll put you on the air. And today we're talking about the sanctity of marriage, something that God invented by the way, this is not about uh, this is not about gay marriage. We're not do- instituted. Instituted. Yes. All right. We're not even going to go down that road. This is the, there's only one kind of marriage. That's between a man and a woman. If you don't agree with that, I'm okay with that. I really am okay with that. That 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 dog won't hunt on this radio program anymore. It's done. We know the truth. Beyond that, we want to talk about how improving you, how to improve you and your spouse's relationship. Our guest today is Pastor Greg Long from Grace Church, services at 830 and 1030 in the morning. And you have a a big marriage seminar, is that the right word? Conference, yes. Conference. Mm -hmm. And when is that? It's January 29th and 30th, the end of this month. It's a Friday evening and Saturday morning uh, situation with two sessions on Friday evening and three on Saturday morning. And uh, the cost? Cost is $10 a person. We're trying to keep it very reasonable. Okay. And it is for any couple before they're married, while they're married, during a divorce, dating? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's, yes. it's for singles and married couples. Singles 
who especially would be interested in marriage and preparing for marriage, high school age and up. So, yes. Okay. And uh, who's the gentleman that's leading it? His name is Paul Tripp. And uh, he's a, a nationally known author and conference speaker. He's written a number of books. Uh, and so he'll be with us in person. Um, somebody has asked, are you just showing a video of him? No, he'll be here with us, and he'll be leading the conference. Is it T-R-I-P-P? T-R-I-P-P, yes. Okay, all right. So um, let's talk for a minute about what the Bible says about marriage, as you understand it. Well, you said it earlier, and that is that God instituted it. God ordained and put together two in the beginning. Uh, there was a need for that. Adam uh, was the only thing in all of creation that wasn't very good, and that was the fact that Adam needed help. Uh, and, and all of us men can, I, can relate to that. It was not good for him to be alone, so God um, solved that problem and brought Adam to him, um, creating her from him. And so God's, this was God's idea. Marriage was God's idea. And so if we're going to understand marriage, we need to look to him to help us. And uh, I think that God's word has a lot to say about that. And uh, so this conference is grounded in biblical truth about marriage. Yeah, I agree. There is a, there is a lot to be said. You know, uh, Mac alluded to this, I think, before we went to the top of the hour break, you know, that, uh, or did you talk about, yeah, it was before we went to the top hour break. Anyway, you know, so many men uh, that uh, are nominally versed or casually versed in the Bible will know Ephesians uh, chapter 5, where it says, our wives should submit to us. And that's about as far as they go. And, mo and most of the world, it seems like, when they say, when they hear Christians say that we want to have a biblical perspective on marriage, that's the first thing they jump to. Uh, I had a pastor years ago point out to me that Ephesians 5, uh, before we get to that passage, actually points out that uh, we should submit one to another uh, as submitting unto Christ. So um, that's where the conversation has to begin, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And, and, and the focus of this conference is not simply five ways to improve your communication sure. or men are from Mars, women are from Venus or whatever it is. And those are all wonderful things and, yeah. and they can be helpful. Uh, it, it goes much deeper. This conference goes much deeper than those surface level things, again, as helpful as they can be. So I'm, I'm excited about this because of how it will dig deep to the root of uh, the issues that we face in marriage. Well, I liked this. Uh, the, the title of the conference, or at least what I have written down, is What Did You Expect? And and, and that's a really great question because so many of us, you, you talked about uh, singles coming in uh, and, and coming to this event wanting to learn about marriage. And uh, many of us in the world today, when we think about getting married, we think it's going to solve some problem or or we think that it's just the next step upon our evolution of life you know i i, I was born I, I went to school i went to college i graduated now i got married i'm gonna have kids and those kids are gonna go through the same process and then i'll die and life will be wonderful and oftentimes we get married just because we think it's what we're supposed to do and then the movies tell us that 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 marriage is just this wonderful thing it's a wonderful blissful happy time and if you stop loving that person, well, you've fallen out of love and you can move on to the next person. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think thinking about marriage has to be bigger than that. I mean, what, what do you think the, the one thing we're not expecting or, or, or we're missing? What, where's our biggest blind spot, you think, before we get married or when we first get married? Well, in, in that scenario, what is the purpose of marriage to that person that you just described? What are they looking for in marriage? Generally speaking, I, I think that person is looking for personal fulfillment, right? Happiness, what's in it yes. for me kind of stuff, right? Yes, and that's, that's it. And so Paul Tripp and others have said, what if God's purpose in marriage is not to make us happy, but to make us holy? Mm. Now, that's not the language. That was a different author that said it exactly like that. But a lot of what Paul Tripp has to say is very similar, that God has a greater purpose for marriage than my personal fulfillment and happiness. Not that I shouldn't be happy in my marriage, but uh, that's, that's not his ultimate purpose. So, yeah, there, there are some larger issues that are important. Uh, do you think it's significant that uh, when, when God created woman, he created from Adam's rib, signifying equality? that she wasn't to rule over his head, nor would she be trampled under by his feet, and that submission only came after sin and rebellion came into the picture. So a lot of women kind of feel like they got the short end of the stick, that, uh, you know, I got this brutish 
cad that rules over me and you know i mean do you find that in a lot of you know a lot of women or kind of resent that verse that she should just submit to the husband? Well, there's certainly distortions of this concept of submission. And because of sin, men, and even in the curse, God said to the woman, they're going to want to dominate you and your desire will be for them. But I actually would disagree slightly in that I don't see the submission concept rooted in the fall. I see it rooted in creation because Paul in 1 Timothy 2 right. said that, Adam was formed first, then Eve. And you see, even before the fall in chapter three, you see several things where God created Adam first. He gave him authority. He named the animals. Uh, and then God created woman out of him. And then God gave Adam the authority to name Eve. So he gave her her name, woman. Um, so I don't see it rooted in the fall. I see it rooted in creation. However, to your point, there is a misunderstanding of what biblical sure. submission is. Well, and, and I then, think that's important to clarify what is biblical submission. Then there's the verse that talks about God is the head of Christ as man is the head of woman. First Corinthians 11, So, yes. well, I, I would, would find my question in, I don't mean it so much as in, I, I believe in submission, but the, the negative part of submission came after the fall. Yes, yes, definitely. And so submission... Uh, and and we, we do need to go back to Genesis 1, and it's crystal clear that men and women are both created in the image of God, <coughs> equally created in the image of God, not one more than the other. Right. So men and women together reflect God in a, in a special way. Sure. Uh, it's not just men. So uh, through their na essence and nature, men and women are equal. They're equal in Christ, Galatians 3 tells us. So... It's just that God has designed certain roles and responsibilities in the home, and I also believe in the church, uh, for specific purposes. And so that's that's where that whole issue comes in. That's not necessarily the focus of our conference, but that is important to discuss. Pastor Greg Long is our guest from Grace, uh, Grace Church, services 8.30 and 10.30 on Sunday morning. We're talking marriage, and we're thankful you're here. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there.
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after four o'clock, eleventh day, and the only reason we're dating this is because we're talking about a marriage conference that's going to be going on January 29th and 30th. You may be listening to this program after the date, therefore the marriage conference is is not going to, or it's already happened. But it is nice for you to know uh, a little bit about what biblical marriage looks like. And we've got Pastor Greg Long from Grace Church services on Sunday at Grace at 830 and 1030. And Brad is on the chat line. What does Brad have to say? Yeah, he was listening to uh, Pastor Greg speaking about marriage making us holy. Mm. And he says, I guess the key may be in serving your spouse. Yep. Yeah, I think that's great. That's a great so it goes both ways. insight. You know, I absolutely um, had no concept of what a marriage should look like before Jesus mugged me. I know it. You, you, you got two marriages. I've got three. No, I just found out today you promised to another guy. <laughs> oh, oh, gee, many. Um, uh, I, I was, I was, uh, uh, Pastor Greg. I was a cultural Christian. Put the suit on on Sundays, went to Sundays or went to church, put a little jingle in the collection plate, tithe, heavens no. Are you kidding me? Crazy. I work hard for that money. Maybe I might pour water at the annual pancake feed, but that was the end of it. And marriage was um, uh, marriage was a battle, to be honest with you, because I had no idea what Jesus wanted me to be to my wife, but I sure as heck knew what I needed her to be to me. And when Jesus mugged me and I began to read the word and understand a relationship with Christ rather than, you know, a, a, a little G, little O, little D, whatever it was. I, I was a messed up dude. Uh, you just said it a minute ago. I'm here to serve my wife. I'm here to treat her like Christ treats the church. And Christ is here to serve us. He is here to. Well, you're the pastor. I shouldn't be talking to you about this. But <laughs> he's here to wash all of our sins away. And to make sure that we are taking care of those people that he has entrusted us to take care of. Because I, I have been entrusted by God to take care of this incredible woman that I call wife. And uh, I was so thankful when he finally straightened that out in my head. Because I just I wasn't a very good husband I, I, at all. Because I thought, hey, woman, you know, you're mine. That's mine. Jump. How high? I know that sounds horrible, but it's just true. That's what Christ can do to a marriage. Yes. You know, he can absolutely heal it. There's no way CJ and I should be married today. No way. But it's only through the grace. She has up on her bedroom wall, dot, 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 but God, mm. which reminds her every morning when she wakes up and she's not very happy with me, which are <laughs> fewer than the days before. She looks up there and she says, but God, but God put us together. He's going to keep us together. And we were together. How long were we together? Uh, 85. And you say 28 years? Well, it'd be 31 years because oh. it was 85. So 85 to 95, 95 to 05, 05 to 15 would be 30 plus one is that's my common core math. 31 years. <laughs> so, um, and we were at a marriage seminar at your church, I don't know, two years ago with, uh, uh Dr. Mike Hartwig. Yes. Marriage matters. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a wonderful experience. You guys do a good job on marriage conferences. Again, it's June 29th and 30th. Uh, Paul Tripp, is he pastor Paul Tripp or just Paul Tripp? He has pastored. He has served as a pastor. He's not, not full-time pastoring now, mostly speaking at conferences and writing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he'll be the speaker. It's a couple sessions on Friday night, then you'll go home to your own house, get up the next day and a couple sessions the next day. Guess what the cost is? I mean, what what would you pay? You know, hundred dollars. Oh, these two hundred dollars, fifty plus, easy a person. Yeah, yeah. ten but, bucks a head. Yeah, great, great value, absolutely great value. And I and I can attest to 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 
the giftedness of Paul Tripp. You know, he, uh, in addition to being a pastor and speaking a lot, he does a lot of counseling. He comes from a counseling perspective. So I think one of the things that impresses me about Paul Tripp, and I, and I think what excites me about this conference, uh, Greg, is that I know that what I'm going to hear is not going to be here are the five things you need to do. If you start doing these five things, life will be better uh, and, and walk away. And you feel guilty because you haven't been doing those five things. You know, I mean, I think uh, Paul Tripp comes at this uh, with a grace lens. I mean, he comes at this understanding that we all need Jesus, that all of us uh, have issues that we need to, to, to wrestle with. And that the real savior of our marriage is the same person that saves our soul, right? I mean, Jesus yes. is the one uh, who can restore any marriage. Uh, and it begins with, with us as individuals submitting our lives to him. But then also, I, I would assume, submitting our marriage uh, to the Lord and, and what that means and, and, and working through the difficult business of, of doing that submission. It's not, it's not easy. Yeah. And that, that's the key right there is I would call it a gospel lens. Yeah. And so you just, if you know the gospel and, and uh, the story of the gospel starts with God who created everything, including marriage, he created us all to worship, love, serve, obey him. But of course we went our own way. And uh, so sin entered the world and sin affected relationships from the very beginning. There was, uh, there was a, a, a an estrangement between God and men and women, God and Adam and Eve, and then sin entered human relationships, their own relationship, uh, their, you know, their one son killed the other. And so these things affect our marriage. And so Paul Tripp is saying, let's get to the root of the issue. Let's get to as the Bible says, as Jesus says, the heart of the issue, because out of the heart proceeds all kinds of sins. So the things that we do uh, to our spouse that cause conflict, it, it's not, we often focus on what they are doing that caused me to say that unkind word or whatever. But, but Jesus said, it's out of your own heart. Uh, and so Paul Tripp is encouraging us to get back to that heart issue, which is the root of, of those issues. Uh, when I was contemplating marriage back in the 1976, 75, 76, I had a veteran married couple tell me, they give me this formula. I don't know if you can practically put it, how you practically put it into into work. But they said if each if each person in the party will, will take 20% and give 80, then everyone's getting 100% in the relationship. You know, so if your wife is taking 20 and giving 80, you're taking 20 and giving 80. Everybody's getting what they need. It's when somebody takes 100 and don't give nothing. Yeah. Is where the problem is. And it is hard to quantify exactly. I mean, in a sense, I mean, th that's hard because in a sense, we're called to completely serve our spouse. I mean, what if your spouse has Alzheimer's? What if your spouse, and I certainly can't speak from any kind of experience of what that call would entail. I, there are people who, who could speak to that, but there are times when it may be a hundred percent. Sure. Uh, so yes. Yeah, so there's the, there's the heart issue that, that, that he gets to and addresses. And he says, we all want to worship something. We're created to worship and when sin enters the world, we become self-worshippers. And so I look at you as a way to get what I want. And in a marriage, I look at my spouse as a way to get what I want. And so when she's accommodating me, then, hey, we have a happy marriage. If she's standing in my way, uh, then there'll be conflict of some kind or another. And so understanding that helps us understand the solution, the answer, and you alluded to it, you said it, and that is Jesus Christ and the gospel. And, and that sounds very pious and it sounds very pie in the sky, but when we do apply the gospel lens to ourselves and our lives and our marriages, we can begin to not just skim the surface of, okay, let's improve our communication, but dig deeper to see what are the, the, the hard issues that I'm battling in my heart that are causing me to do the, the things that I'm doing that are not loving. You know, I, I, Pastor Rick, Bob, did you have something you were going to say? Well, go ahead, after you. Okay, um, sorry. I, you wanna, had... I, just, I want to hit the text line for just a second. Yeah, no, please do. We have a brand new text line for you to be able to communicate with us. Now, please don't do it while you're driving. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Just please don't. Um, I had a car accident earlier this year because I was texting. So it really does happen. It doesn't just happen to other people. So pull over when you're at Hy-Vee, when you're, you know, when you're at a stop sign or something, put it in park, but you can text us at 
0993, and that's a service legend truth text line. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and that's a good reminder, too. If you've got a question or a comment about um, marriage, if you've got uh, a question about what are we talking about when we say the gospel, maybe you don't even know what we mean when we say the gospel, maybe you're not sure, uh, you can definitely call and, and, and ask any of us a question. Uh, ask the show a question, 515-244-0077, or if you have a marriage-related question that you want to ask to Pastor Greg, I, I would encourage you to do that at 515-244-0077. As Mac often says, it's your voice we want to hear, and we love it when you guys, uh, when you call in, uh, because you guys really uh, share some great insights. But um, this is this is going to sound strange, Pastor Greg, but I, I think I, I I can see it, and I and I hate to sound sexist, and I think this this happens. Men do it as well, and I can think of scenarios in in which it's men. But I think in terms of like. When I think of movies and things like that, it can, tends to be depicted as the female role that does this. And what, I, what I'm getting at here is idolizing our spouse. A lot of times, I, I, you see this sometimes in a, in a woman who is in a difficult relationship. I'm married to, well, Mac. Mac. Oh I've my. always I've always wanted to be married to Mac, and he's so wonderful, and I love him Here. so much. And I get my <laughs> I get my satisfaction, I get my identity, I get my worth from the person I'm married to. Um, it, 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 it's so strange, but I've heard that, and I don't know if it was from Paul Tripp or, or not, but I've heard that we can fall into that kind of idolatry where we actually idolize our spouse. If they're happy, I'm happy, and life is great. Um, Speak to that. Is that right? Well, that's that... that's a key word. Idolatry idols. Where uh, uh, you know, it's been said that we're our heart our our hearts are idol making factories, and so whatever we serve or worship or love other than God is an idol. And it can be that form where we 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 idolize our spouse, uh, just like my wife does with me. Well, <laughs> just kidding, honey. <laughs> yeah. Or it can be that we idolize our own personal comfort or or pleasure or financial goals or and so the spouse is standing in the way so it could be both of those sides of the coin it could be i idolize my spouse so i try to do everything for them then i'm i'm disappointed when they don't reciprocate or it could be that they're just standing in the way of certain things that i want and so that's why i do what i do to manipulate them pastor uh greg long is here from grace church 8 30 and 10 30 on sunday mornings uh, they're having a marriage conference with pastor paul tripp on january 29th and 30th ten dollars Ten dollars for five sessions, two on Friday and three on Saturday. I do. What do you go ahead? I do have a text that just okay. came in again. The service legends truth text is eight oh nine zero nine nine three. Common is Paul Tripp is the primary expert called upon in the 33 series. A man and his marriage. Oh, that's how I know him. I'm going through the 33 series right now. And I thought that name was. Is that who? Yeah, I just I'm I'm not, I don't read a lot, so that's okay. Yeah, if you've ever seen him, he's got a big bushy mustache and big glasses. I don't know if you've seen him on video or yeah. not, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's he's in uh, Man and His Marriage. That's what it says. Yeah, yeah. in the 33 series. Yeah, that's a great series. Yeah, he's a sharp cookie. What do you, Pastor? What do you call it when? And and maybe we were discussing it, the identity thing. What do you call it when? Uh, your whole life will fall apart if you're not married to that person anymore. Yeah, you're finding your identity in your marriage, or again, uh, it's an idol. It's something other than God that you're worshiping. Uh, those sound very theological and churchy terms. You're worshiping, you know. I don't get down on my knees and bow down to my spouse, but worship is certainly when we ascribe devotion when we sacrifice for something you know we think of a deity we sacrifice time and money and so on to to give to this deity well whatever it is in our life that's the thing we're sacrificing for and and devoting ourselves to that's the idol and so i think that kind of goes in with what you're saying is our identity is found in our relationship, our marriage. Yeah, is that's it? interesting because, well, and I'll, Chris, you and I could talk about this when we come back, but what did I just say an hour ago right, about right. what would happen if my wife passed away first? Right. That's a, that's a, I shouldn't think that way. That's a problem. All right, we'll talk about that. We're with uh, uh, Pastor Greg Long from Grace Church. We're coming back here live on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershad. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fix them the problem today. If they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a lot. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing. We have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. All right, 22 minutes before the top of the hour, uh, we're going to have uh, Hank, the Bible Answer Man, from 5 to 6 today. And that is a live, nat I guess it's an international show, uh, with Hank Hanagram. So it's one eight eight. Ask Hank. Did I slaughter the name? You accidentally said Hanagram. That's funny. What is it? Hanagram. Graph. Hanagram. You normally say it right. You just Do slipped I? up today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one eight eight eight. ask hank one eight 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 ask hank uh, get in there and uh, get on that show and ask questions and, and challenge. Challenge Hank. I'd, I'd like, you know what, Frank? You know what I'd like to see you do? Triple eight, ask Frank. I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was fascinating that day when Kevin Johnson was on and uh, Stewart. Yeah, John Stewart. John Stewart, Stewart called in and challenged Kevin Johnson. As did he know the original three numbered sign of the accuser? And Pastor Johnson knew it. It isn't 666, it's 616. And it somehow got changed in the translation, which I think it's funny how, how it's, it's like when you go around the room and you tell a secret and then you tell the next person by the time it gets back, <laughs> it's completely wrong. I'll bet if you asked 99% of the Christians oh, sure. at oh, any man. given point, they'd say it's 666. Yeah, absolutely. But I'd be interested to hear what uh, Hank says about that. So, Frank, maybe you can get in on his show sometime and ask him that. Been there, done that, and I'll do it again. All right. Thank you. Uh, today, we are our special guest is uh, Pastor Greg Long from Grace Church. Services at 8.30 and 10.30 every Sunday morning. They're having a marriage conference two weeks from this coming weekend, January 29th and 30th. It's $10. I mean, I don't... I mean, it's going to be colder than heck. Super Bowl, I think, is the next week. So you really don't have... Plus, it's on a Friday night and Saturday. 
Guys, you want to you really want to warm the cockles of your wife's heart. Take her to a marriage conference. Seriously. Tell her you're willing to invest that time and take her. And maybe it's the other way around. Maybe maybe I'm talking to a, a, a spouse here who's female and she's the one that just doesn't want to talk about marriage and doesn't want to meet other people about talking about marriage and her marriage is just fine. And I'm sorry, it's not what you thought it would be. But after 49 years or whatever it is, it's what it is. And that's the best it's going to get. And is it OK as a husband to tell her it cost a thousand bucks? No, that'd be a lie. Oh, okay. But it sure would make it good. So I'm, I'm just asking you to pray about this. You know, is it, what would this do? And I, I want to go back and talk to the men for just a second. What would this do for your wife if you said, hey, listen, Valentine's Day is coming up in, in February, and I got a Valentine's gift I want to give you. I, I want to take us to a marriage conference. <laughs> now, be prepared for her comeback. Why? What do you think's wrong with our marriage? Because that's not a don't, go, don't, don't, don't. Just that, say me at that point. Yes. Very good, Pastor. <laughs> Honey, it's all about me. I'm busted, and I want you to come along so the Lord can fix me. And what a rotten guy I am. <laughs> I have seen so many marriages healed and set on the road to healing. Long time. Long time healing. You know, many, many marriages would be a lot better if the husband and wife agreed they were on the same side. But somewhere along the line with honeymoons and children and grandchildren, we don't find ourselves on the same side. And we find ourselves feeling abandoned by the roadside as the wife and the kids seem to go on and do everything they're doing or the husband and the kids. And the other spouse is just like, what happened? This is not what I wanted out of a marriage. Well, you know what? No marriage ends like Cinderella's. We all live happily ever after just doesn't exist. Life happens. Sin exists. The accuser wants to break up your marriage. He wants to attack it and he wants to destroy it. Because you know what happens when you destroy a marriage? You destroy a family. And God hates, hates divorce, says it right in the good book. So maybe just maybe for 10 bucks a head, maybe just maybe. God is asking you to invest some time, less than 24 hours, in something that can save or greatly improve your marriage. The Service Legends uh, Truth text line is on and ready for you. 515-809-0993. We're waiting to hear uh, what you have to say. I want to thank Ed for uh, listening in and uh, sending that information about uh, Paul Tripp and the 33 series. I have a chat question. Oh, a chat. All right. At webcast1live.com. And it's for the pastor. Can the wife be the head or leader of the home if perchance the husband doesn't choose to take that lead? Can the wife biblically lead if the husband is not as strong in, this, in his faith? That's a great question. I mean, there are things that just by default you'll have to do, uh, maybe just to keep the home running, you know, and so on and so forth. There are things then that you do have to decide, and there are difficult decisions. For example, if he refuses to come to church, if he refuses to take the family to church, you may say before the Lord, uh, I need to be in church. Uh, I would love for my kids to be in church, so I'm going to make the decision to, to take them. Um, but there, there, it's difficult because there, there may come a point at which you say, I'm going to pray, I'm going to wait on the Lord. I, I don't have the answer to every specific scenario, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine line. I feel sorry, Pastor Long, for the spouse, the woman usually. Mm -hmm. The husband not only says, I'm not going to church, but you're not taking my children there either. Yes. You're not going to turn them against me. Yeah. I can't imagine what that would do to the wife. Yeah. What does she do in that situation? That is difficult, as I said. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's abuse. Yeah. And each situation is different. And there are times when the wife says, Lord, you know my heart. You know that's where I want to be. At this time in my marriage, I want to do my best to support my husband. I'll be honest with him. I'll tell him that what he's doing is wrong. And there are other times she says before the Lord, uh, I'm sorry, honey, but uh, I God calls me to do this. I need to do this. I love you very much. Uh, I want to encourage you in any way that I can, but uh, this is what God says in his word I must do. I must not forsake the assembling together. So I, I can't give a, a one-size-fits-all answer in every situation. There are biblical principles where certainly we're called to, to obey, uh, and at the same time to do so respectfully, lovingly, 
and, and trusting God. I heard a minister share this story one time about a woman who was coming to a set of evangelistic meetings, and he just put his foot down one night and told her she wasn't going to go to those evangelistic meetings, and she persisted on going. So one night he confronted her, and he says, you walk out the door and you go to that evangelistic series, I'm going to kill you. She says, well, either way, I'm going to be at the Lord tonight. And at the end of the story, she went to the meeting. She didn't die. And it ended up somehow he was in, somehow the Lord worked on him, the Spirit worked on him, and he started coming to the meetings and was converted. Yeah. And accepted Christ as his Savior. So it was through that woman's strength that led her husband to, to Christ. Well, and, and so let me just circle back to the conference. And surprisingly, you know, I, I would say in this case, let's say the woman really, really wants, the wife really, really wants to go to the conference. The husband is extremely hesitant, doesn't want to go. I, I wouldn't recommend that she just go on her own and say, well, fine, if you don't want to go, I'm going to go by myself. I don't, I don't know that that would be the best the best yeah. thing to do. And so it takes, it's difficult. Many women are in this situation and it is, it is sad. As you mentioned, it's, it's very sad and it's difficult. All right. So new phone number for you to pay attention to 515-809-0993. That's the service legends, truth talk text line. 515-809-0993. Please put that in your phone do not text and drive, please. I had a car accident this last year because I was texting and driving. Thank God no one was hurt. But it reminded me that you don't text and drive, and there's a reason for that. Pastor Greg Long is our guest, Grace Church. Uh, that's uh, out on 235. Yeah, how, how do you tell people it, where it you is? You can certainly see it from the freeway. It's the church with the big green roof. It's a little difficult to get to. If you are on the freeway, you get off of the Euclid exit, and you wind your way back behind the high V, and there we are. And uh, their services are at 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning on Sunday. They are having a marriage conference hosted by uh, Pastor Paul Tripp, T-R-I-P-P. -P. You can Google him and find out that he's qualified, very, very qualified, to set you down and talk to you about marriage. And that marriage conference is January 29th and 30th. That's a Friday night and Saturday. There's no reason, no good reason. You, you'll you'll come up if you don't want to go you'll come up with a reason but i want you to think about giving this to your spouse for a valentine's present how about working on your marriage with jesus standing by your side what better teacher could you have we're coming back live next Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Web. Ten 
minutes before the top of the hour, top of the hour. Hank, the Bible answer man. I'll never try to say his last name again. <laughs> Jill King laughed at me on Facebook. Did she really? Facebook. Oh, that's, that's funny. funny. That's funny. Uh, Hank, the Bible answer man. one eight eight eight. ask hank Smart guy, international talk show host, live from 5 to 6 Central Time. He's got a big thing that he can brag about because he was on Max World Live once. You interviewed Hank the Bible Answer Man. I doubt if he even recalls. Yeah, but I remember it because I thought it was absolutely hilarious because he is a terrible interview. He's yeah, really he is. He, He's a really smart guy, but yeah. you know, you inter- he's, if you've listened to Hank, yeah. he's very, especially up against Mac. You know, Mac is very alive. You know, this is a very dynamic broadcast, and Hank is very serious. And he's very focused. But you'll get great answers and great information. And, you know, this past year, I've noticed his program's gotten a little bit more interview. He does a lot of really cool interviews. They've yeah. done neat series on creation, sort of on science and different things like that. So it's not just been just Bible questions. It's really a cool show. And, but and, uh, and that's really the nature of, I don't want to get into radio, but that's really the nature of, of our business is I can't do a show alone. I mean, okay, maybe if nobody shows up today, I can pontificate for two hours. I can I can pull enough out to pontificate for two hours, but I couldn't do what Rush Limbaugh does every day. That would be just boring. I want to have a conversation. Yeah. That's why I like you guys being here. That's why I like the pastor being here. And when you're not a conversationalist, it's difficult to be interviewed. You know who is the worst interview on the radio? Comedians. Yeah. Because you have to set them up so they can tell their joke. I mean, I got to the point with Paul. Paul's passed away now, but Paul, when he owned the Funny Bone, he'd always want to bring comedians in. I, they, they don't interview well, Paul. They, they, may, they just doesn't work. Now, if you give me a list of the, 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 the jokes, and then they can give me the punchline, okay. But yeah, Hank's a great guy. All right, uh, we've got a brand new Service Legends Truth text line, 809-0993. That's where you can jump in and text us. Don't do it while you're driving, please. Of course, Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat watching the chat is now walk, uh, w- now watching the Truth Text line from Service Legends. Also, our guest is Pastor Greg Long from Grace Church services at eight thirty and ten thirty. Marriage conference January 29th and thirtieth. Now, I want to let's just take for somebody, for instance. Oh, I don't know. Let's think of somebody that hasn't been married in a long time, wants to be married. Perhaps they're a little squeaky a little rusty around the edges on how to treat a woman. I don't know. Let's just... A fictitious person. Let's Hank. go in Frank. Hank. <laughs> Could a single person come to this marriage conference? Well, what better way to, place to find a spouse than a marriage conference? Isn't that right? <laughs> I mean, you know... Well, no, that's not exactly the purpose. But yes, singles are welcome okay. to attend. Got a couple questions on the text line, Ryan says. Do you see those? On the Service Legends... Text line at eight oh nine. Well, the last the last text I received was, "How can the sh- the show be heard online?" And I've responded. Oh, you responded to that. Okay, mm-hmm. good. All right. And I yeah. should mention before I forget that the uh, way to register is to go to gracehome.com, and it's right there on the first page. Gracehome.com. Yeah. To to yes, there's a link to register right there. All the details. Grace Home. Dot com. And it's not an overnight thing. You nope. go back to your house. Uh, there's lots of motels down in Delaware. If you want to make it a weekend where you and your bride, uh, I, always, I always act like I'm talking to guys. I'm sorry. Where you and your spouse can get a room and, and have a nice weekend, a getaway weekend. But man, come, come with, you know, don't come prepared to hear things you don't want to hear. Come prepared to surrender. Surrender your marriage, surrender what you think your marriage ought to be, and listen to what Jesus thinks it ought to be. He invented it. The Creator's a good guy to ask, hmm, what should my marriage look like? Amen, amen. Okay, I've got a couple more that I had to refresh. Service Legends Truth text line at 809-0993. Hi, I work 70 plus hours a week to support my family so that my wife can be a stay-at-home mom. My good for you. question is, how do I balance my work and my marriage so that my wife doesn't feel like I don't spend any time with her? Wow. <sighs> you're what? Well, can I? No, you're the pastor. You answer it. Well, your wife's got to understand what you're what you're surrendering. No, I'm not what you're surrendering. What you're investing, so you can be a stay-at-home mom. That is the awesome gift that a man can give to a, a wife. You've given that to your wife and your family, Chris. I honor you for that. A, a guy going out and working what he needs to work, so his wife and babies can be raised together during the day. Not that there's anything wrong with daycare, but let's face it, it's better if mama and baby raise each other. 
That is the best gift you can give. And if your wife feels shorted on that, just love her. Just just hold her and love her and tell her you know. It's hard to be with babies 70 hours a week and then come home and want to spend time with your husband and your husband's too busy. But what you're doing is so good. The investment is into the child and the mother. That bonding time is priceless. Is there any other? No, that's that's great. And that's hard because, uh, you know, they, they need their dad, too, at home. And so... God puts us in difficult situations at times, and, you know, he's doing the best that he can. Um, you know, it, it's hard to know without more details about the situation, but I, I do commend, as Max said, his desire for his wife to stay home with the kids. All right, another question from the uh, Service Legends Truth Text Line at 809-0993. Do you think Christians give up on marriage too quickly? Yes. <laughs> well, I think everybody gives up on marriage too quickly. Yeah, and that goes back to what you think the purpose of it is. And so um, if we see, and, 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 you know, at the end of the conference, and I'm not going to give away all his material here, but, uh, you know, he talks about how one of the keys is, is seeing God as our creator, which means that we are each made differently. And so there are going to be differences. And, you know, uh, we know that. But also seeing God as sovereign. God has placed us together it, 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 with our imperfections, with our faults, with our histories. Uh, and, and so th- it's not an accident. And, and those things that are difficult in marriage, God can use for your good and his glory to make us more like Jesus Christ. And so those difficult things shouldn't be something that we immediately turn tail and run from, but we, we seek to resolve and to work through together. And it may be very, very difficult, uh, but God can still use those things. Uh, the marriage relationship was the closest thing that God could give us to relate to is relationship between God and the church. So if we can't forgive each other in our marriages, that's a hindrance to our ability to to forgive because that's where f- forgiveness is fostered in your home, in your family, with your children. You know, you're the foundation of the citizens. So you got to teach your children your and, and forgiveness. And the father sets that tone in the home. It's his job and his job alone. But... You can't be overbearing. No. Jesus was never overbearing. See, that's what I learned from Jesus about marriage. Is I'm here to honor my wife, not to And that's where he said, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Jesus is our example as husbands on how we're to love sacrificially yeah. and so on. Yeah, when I, when I run into churches, and I know of a couple here in our market where they kind of teach that dad's the boss stuff and... Uh, It doesn't end up well. You know, it doesn't end up well. All right. Thank you for being here. We look forward to having Paul Tripp on. Uh, Maybe the both of you can come on when he gets into town on that Friday afternoon. I don't know. What time does it start on Friday? It starts at uh, 7 o'clock p.m. Okay. Well, maybe you guys could come on on Friday if there's time. Uh, Chris, thanks for being here. Frank, thanks for being here. Bob, thanks for being here. Thanks to Service Legends for our new Truth text line. Ryan, thanks for producing. Until I see you tomorrow, remember, think of that person you need to forgive. Forgive them, because as you forgive, you shall be forgiven. I learned that at church. I'll see you there.